I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna talk about the five dimensions of a target that's in the ground. Um, a lot of people say, man, you dig out so many targets, you're so fast and efficient um, at digging. Well, be, I think mainly because I go by tones and a lot of these newer machines have these screens on them and you're looking at your screen, you know, you're swinging and looking at the screens and the numbers and the ferro checks and the depth meter and the horseshoes and the diagrams and the size and the stuff. I, my detector tonal wise is telling me these five dimensions tonally, right? I don't have to look at the screen. All that stuff on the screen, I'm already getting all that information from the screen through the tones and I can swing over target and instantly I know within one second I know all five of these dimensions I don't have to sit there and think about a target back my coil out lift my coil up change programs and whatnot cycle through the programs so you got five dimensions of a target their size depth Conductivity. Shape. And orientation. And I'm gonna do a couple more illustrations to here on a different piece of paper and I'll, I'll, I'll illustrate it and try to, um, try to open your eyes so the size is is a all five of these are big things um if i have my metal detector dialed in um i can hit on deeper targets shallower targets lower conductors and higher conductors even in emi and in trash and i just i just balance that detector and so it's not too loud it's not too soft it's not chattering too much um, and I'll still be hitting on a lot of targets, you know, just m go along into an area and just hit on a lot of targets and get them out efficiently and discriminate and reject some of those targets by tones, um, by these five right here, the size of a target. If you're looking at your numbers, if you're looking at your numbers, you're looking at your numbers, a big pop can will read up the same numbers as a coin will right you can't tell that by the by the screen you're looking at your screen you cannot tell that because it's reading up the same numbers you can tell that tonally by your ears the depth sure that the the uh the screen you know your metal detector screen your display will give you a depth reading some will will give you a depth um indicator but not all the time um is that going to be um on the spot because there could be some trash in the ground that the detector is um is it, it has discriminated out and it's and it's detecting the depth on the discriminated items out in the ground you know and the if I have my detector dialed in right, like with the audio response just right and the sensitivity right and in the right frequencies, I can tell the depth of all my targets, right? That's how I can dig so many targets out because I can tell the depth instantly, just like that. I know to use my shovel. I know to use my hand digger. I know if it's right on the surface, just open, open, and open the uh, grass up there and it's right on the surface. So it's, it's all tonal. It's, it's a tonal game. The conductivity of a target. Um, if you're running three tone, it's harder to um, really, it's, it's harder to understand a three tone machine is actually only a two tone machine because one of those tones is an iron tone or a reject tone. If you really want to get specific about it, it's a reject tone, um, matters on your discrimination. But the conductivity of metal, if I'm like in full tones on the day of Deus machines or 50 tone on on the Knox or 60 tone on the, the uh, legend um, I can tell the conductivity right when I swing over it I don't have to look at the screen the screen sure it gives you a good conductivity um, it gives gives you a good VDI on like coins and whatnot because coins are coins are pretty much easy because they're round and I'll show you that in a different uh, illustration here um, on 
describing the targets, what they sound like in the ground. Um, the shape of a target, um, the, the conductivity on a target, um, like pitch tones on the dais or the legend, that um, this dimension is not in in that in in, in that tone. Um, only the size, depth, and the, the shape, and maybe the orientation. But in pitch tones, it doesn't give you a conductivity dimension. Um, pitch tones is basically a one tone operation. It's a variable tone operation. So the deeper the target, the lower the tone, or the bigger the target, the higher the tone. Um, and if it's a higher conductor or a lower conductor, it's not going to give you a different tone. Um, so the conductivity is out of the, the pitch tones. It doesn't give you a conductivity dimension. The shape of a target, when I'm swinging over a target like a bracelet or a, a big iron pipe in the ground there, I'll get a target one way on it. And I can tell that it's a long target because I can, I can walk, as I'm walking forward, um, I'm getting that same target. And then I rotate on it and it goes away or I get iron tones. It matters really how I have my, my, my detector set up. Um, but the, the shape of a target is pretty important too. Um, so you're not digging out a bunch of large junk or some pipes or um, just large items. The orientation of targets, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people say, oh my, you know, I, um, I, I, I'm gonna hit on every coin, you know, if I just reject all the junk out and just, you know, um, notch in coins, um, you're gonna be missing a lot of coins on their edge because the orientation of the target. A lot of rings, jewelry, coins are on their edge. Not all coins are flat. And you'll begin to understand that once you dig out a few million targets. You'll, you'll, you'll start digging a lot more coins on their edge and you'll, you'll begin to understand that tone. Or maybe those numbers, if you're looking at the numbers, you'll understand the, um, how your detector is going to respond with your settings on an on a coin or a ring or jewelry on its edge or the shape of targets um i the, the size the size and depth are really important for me because i pretty much dig everything you just never know what you're going to dig out next um and the size and depth are two things that i really have to know you know, within a couple swings, um, that's why I, I rotate on, I rotate on my targets. I, I'll, I'll kind of wobble, I'll kind of do the wobble, right? And usually about 30 or 40 degrees, um, 30 or 40 degrees, I can get a really good indicator of the size and depth. I already got the conductivity because if I'm in full tones, um, it gives me a, a, a tonal indicator of conductivity. If I'm in pitch tones, I don't really get a conductivity, but, um, if it sounds good, you know, these are all sounds. I, I can I can know all five of these dimensions tonal wise. And now I'll now I'll show you what it sounds like, how I can tell the overload tone. I can tell the overload tone on the simplex, the of course the amphibio, <laughs> the older uh the old the uh, F75, the, the Technetics machines, um, those you can tell when your machine is being overloaded. But with the Deus II and the Legend, um, there's there's such deep machines that the overload tones, um, especially in pitch tones. If you're in pitch tones, it's really loud. Um, I can only take pitch tones just for a little while on um, in really trashy spots. Or if I'm if if, I'm, if you're going for deeper targets and if it's clean clean ground, the pitch tones. Is the way to go but um you know i'll explain the overload tone and the coin tone or the trashy tone um or the deep tone you know you got a you got a target here in the ground and here's an overload tone here that's an overload tone it's really loud, right? It's not, it's not a quality tone. And what it does is it distorts the quality of the tone when you get an overload tone. If you have your auto response or your sensitivity or your volume or your audio gain up too high, um, even those targets about three inches deep um, are gonna be an overload tone and it, it, it distorts the tones. So it's hard to determine the depth and the size or if you have your um, 
if you have your reactivity too low or your your um, recovery speed too low, all the targets sound big, right? They sound big, so it's it's harder to um, to get a, a size indicator of the targets, um, especially the shallower ones. You know, they they still sound very large. Um, if you have your your audio um, gain up too high, all the targets will sound really shallow and big, even if they're deep. Right, if you have your audio gain or your audio response up too high, and it, and it increases the falsing on the soil, having an audio gain or your um, audio response up too high, um, it increases the falsing and it increases um, the instability in the detector. It increases EMI. Um, you know, it's harder to get away from EMI if you have too high of a, and it's and it's harder to to um, determine the depth if you have your audio gain or your audio response up too high, it's it's harder to, to, to know the depth of that target and the size of that target. It's the audio response basically just amplifying that signal. And the really large targets, like the junk on the surface, um, if you have your audio response up too high, it, it makes it really loud, very uncomfortable hunt. And I'll show you a, a, a really deep target, right? Smooth tone, right? A really smooth tone and when you back out of that target it, it goes away slowly and then it boom it just goes away right with an overload tone you get a really loud response right up as you get onto it right really loud response and here's a coin tone something that's round some people say oh how how do you how do you know if it's a coin or not well it's the quality of the tone and you can rotate on that target. You can you can rotate on the target a long ways. You know, rotate on it and rotate on it, and you're getting the same tone or the, maybe the same numbers on that target all the way around it. You know, you, it probably means that it's a round target. Um, most likely, it's a round target or it's a very pure metal. Um, hopefully, a gold coin. <laughs> but I'll show you a, a coin tone. Just like that, right? It's a beep, 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 not a whoa, 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 whoa. This is a, you know, really loud. This one's a beep, beep. It's a beep, beep. It's a sharp tone. You can you can actually hear the edges right here. You can hear those edges on that target there, and you you can hear odd shaped targets too, right? That's an odd shaped target. You know, as you rotate on it, you're getting a different tone on that. Your tone changes. Even if you're in pitch tones, that ch tone will change on you just a little bit. If it's an odd shaped target or a target on its edge or your target, that tone might even go away. Once you start going with with tones on your metal detector i promise you you will start getting more targets out of the ground and you will learn that sight more and you'll be, begin to understand um that sight a lot more the more targets that you get out of the ground you don't have to dig up all the junk like i do um i dig out the junk because i, I just want to know i'm very curious um i do reject a lot of targets especially when i'm in trash i will reject a lot of targets and if i get to a spot that has just hundreds and hundreds of bottle caps or pull tabs you know i'm not going to dig out all those pull tabs out at once um i have to be finding jewelry or i have to know that that spot has jewelry in it to really start digging a lot of um, bottle caps and pull tabs out you know you, you really don't have a great chance of finding a ring or some jewelry under a bottle cap but you know, um, if people are in an area and they're dropping bottle caps and pull tabs or ring pulls, ring pulls are really good. You know, ring pulls are different from pull tabs. Pull tabs are usually near the surface, sometimes deeper, but the, the ring pulls are older and um, that means there's deeper stuff in the ground there and there could be some really good stuff in that area. Um, if there's a lot of trash above that, those ring pulls or there's that, that older jewelry is really tough. You just gotta work on it every once in a while, just come back and just keep on digging the trash out. You know, it's a process. You know, nobody said it was easy. Um, it just takes effort. Um, if you have friends who can help you clear out those spots, um, that makes it even funner. Makes it even, it, it makes it easier um, to um, get a good indicator 
and that's why I like hunting with others so we can really scour an area you know really um, explore and we we can't um, do some recon on an area and see where the hot spots are and then maybe if I come back later on um, I'll find something good in that area um, maybe come back with with a different detector or set up my detector differently um, you know you're not always gonna find epic stuff on a site um, your first hunt you know you really have to get familiar with that site where the hot spots are at if the hot spots are really even worth hunting you know some some hot spots you know get so much trash on them they're just they're just gone you know, they're, just, they're just a lost cause. Um, they're just too much trash. I don't want to sit there and dig out little bits of foil um, for two hours if I don't know that there's gold in the area, um, some gold chains or some rings or whatnot. You know, the can slaw, you just got to dig out the can slaw. If you want gold in, in parks, you just got to dig out the can slaw. If you want to go deep, you know, just pretty much basically um, dig a lot of deep junk out and learn that site, you know, if it's even really even worth going deep on that site. You know, I'm not going to take a big coil out to a really trashy spot, and I'm not going to take a small coil out to a spot where I know there's deeper targets, where, where there isn't much, much to dig up. Well, thank you for watching.